What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video on turning this unloved builder's van into something a little bit cooler. In this episode, we're going to be tackling the ride height. Now as standard, on the standard suspension, you fall out of it, it's just far too high. So the first thing we need to do is sort that out. We're going to be fitting it with a set of coilovers. I'm going to be explaining how to do the hub mod and to do the top mount mod um, and what you have to cut out of the rear to get it lower. Now, this isn't a video on how to get your van scraping on the ground low, low, low. This is fitting a set of budget coilovers. We're lowering it by somewhere around 100 mil, so it's not a massive drop, but it is gonna be a big improvement. No point in me keep rambling on, we might as well jump straight into the video. So here we go. Van's jacked up on axle stands, front wheels are off, easy, nice and easy. Um, to get the front suspension off, you're gonna take this rubber off, this scuttle panel, uh, undo this panel here and this panel here which held it with Torx screws and um, that allows you to access the um, top nut for the strut. In here you've got two bolts on the hub. Now this is a T30, so you've got T26, T28 and T30 are this type where the strut slides through the hub. T32 has got, I'll insert, I'll find a picture online and I'll put a picture in now. T32 has got um, like a little bit that comes off and it bolts through in a different way to the hub. Um, so T30, T28, which this is, up to T30, you can do the hub mod, which is grinding the lip out and sending the strut pad through, which we'll do and I'll, I'll explain. Um, drop link, bolt comes off. Now, if you're taking the suspension off your van, like this one is an old van, um, these drop links don't look too bad, but if you're gonna be trying to take the suspension off, buy new drop links. Drop links don't like it, basically it's a ball joint, if you like, inside the thread on this side that allows the suspension to travel and this rod goes up and down to compensate either side to stop body roll. Um, and it's a ball in a socket, so if you try and undo the bolt, you're supposed to put an, a, a spanner on there and an allen key in there, but they're always too tight and it just shears the allen key. So try and undo it with a gun like that, it's just going to spin it. So. Or just, just for the sake of 15, 20 quid, get new drop links. Right, let's uh, make a start, try and get this apart. This scuttle comes off then, so pull that rubber off, easy as that, that literally just pulls off. Um, you need to get a screwdriver then, and in there there's a little recess. Screwdriver behind that, and just pop. So there's that cap off. And that then shows you a 13 mil nut. Undo that with that, and then I'll show you this actually because it can be a bit of a pain. Undo that, like that. That won't necessarily pull off now because it'll be rusted on, and also it's taper. A couple of bits like that, and she comes free. There you go. So yeah, it's on taper. So it'll be tight now, chuck the nut back on, because I guarantee you, if you don't, you're gonna lose it. Put them back in there as well. Oh no, aren't. No, you don't, what you do, you put that back on there. Because you'll lose it. Window wipes off, scuttles off. Got to remove this panel here, and this panel here. Now they're already in with, screw that side, screw that side, and then these ones are screws on the top, and they are a T30 Torx bit. So let's whip them off. Well, you got them off, pulled out. You've got in here, there's this cover, which you remove, and then there is the nut for the top of the strut. This side again, same deal, removed it. Lift this dust cover off, and there is the nut for the top of the strut. So these are 21 mil size nut, which I like to just get a spanner. Try and oh, just, Take the slack off of that top nut as a first thing, just so that you know you can get it undone on that side. And then this side as well, we'll just do the same spanner on. Just give it a pull. Just to knock it. Just to know that it is tight. And that's that undone. So, got a bit carried away. Um, 
and yeah, drive saw, uh, passenger side is done, finished. Um, got all excited and bombed through it, but this side, hopefully, I'll be able to explain what's what. So, right, we're going to do it this side, undo the um, hub nut, undo the bottom ball joint, undo the um, trap rod end from the hub, take the, all the braking system off as we did the other side. Uh, we've already loosened the top one off, so then in theory, we can take the whole hub and strut assembly off in one piece, um, which makes it easier for doing the hub mod. Um, and just easier, because these struts are that long, there's not enough droop on the arm to um, be able to get the strut out when, um, yeah, on, on that. It's quite over the arm, because they're a lot shorter. What I'd also advise is undoing the two bolts at the back. I can show you. That's a nice lot alter. Undo these arm bolts at the back so that you're not putting tension onto the rubber. Because what a lot of people do is bolt through and put, do all of this, lower the van, and they've not undone these um, bolts at the back, which just twists the rubber, which is why the rubbers then perish and go. Um, so undo them, make sure they're free, and then before you do everything back up, when you're going to do those back ones up, jack it up to somewhere where you think is going to be about right height, nip them back up, and then that's essentially those rubbers reset and the flex that they're supposed to do is designed into them should then be back in for the up and down motion of the wheel. So, as we had a little bit of a problem with the other side of trying to get things out and undone, the problem with this side, it's got these two, get it in, these two pinch bolts, you can see them, I don't know if you can see them, there you go, that's the ISO changing. These two pinch bolts, that the strut goes through the hub and these pinch it, top one fine, okay, I'm done all right, Undid the bottom one, went to put the spanner on the other side, and there's no head. Try to show you. See this one? It's got a head, and this one, no head. It's stuck in there. Great. So, uh, as you can see, hit it many, many times, it's going nowhere. So, we're going to have to take everything off and try and get that bolt out, I think, on the bench or on the floor, because I've got a bench. Um, which is great, it's just what we need. That's the hub off the van. Um, drive shaft, bottom ball joint, steering arm, top bolt, and the whole thing comes out as a complete unit. It's the easiest way of getting it off um, and sorting it out. Plus, you don't run the risk when we're going to do this hub mod of catching the CV boot. Now, in there, you can just see there's a lip, which is what stops the strut from falling through. So, what we're going to do is take that off. What we're going to use for that is 57 mil hole saw, which we'll send down there to cut most of it away, and we'll go back in with a die grinder to just clean the edge up, get as much of it off as we can, and then the other strut will slide straight through. And that is what you do for a hub mod. Let's try and show you doing that now. So I cut it away, there's still a slight lip there, so I'll go back in with it, die grinder and grind the rest away. These are the struts we're using. They are JOM, um, budget coilovers. Uh, I think they're about £250 a set. Um, I ran them on my very first T5 when I first got it. So what we've got to do with these, because we want to get it through the hub so much and we want this point to be 
um, about four or five mil away from the CV boot to get us as low as possible, we need to cut this bracket off, which is welded onto the tube. Now, this tube is filled with, I imagine these are oil, because um, they're cheap. Um, so you can't get too much heat into the strut because you'll damage the oil inside. So when you're cutting them off, you gotta be very careful and very selective about where you're gonna, um, gonna cut. So if you're gonna do this, do not get too much heat into the strut, otherwise you'll ruin the strut. Um, we'll give it a go. I'm gonna use a combination of an angle grinder and um, a die grinder, I think, and probably a sander just to try and get them flat towards the end. So let's get on with it. Right, let's do some cutting. Now, I haven't got, can't find me grinding mask or goggles, so I'm using a welding mask on the grind function. So I can still see. So, they're off now. What I will eventually do is flatten these off, cut them off and weld them on to a collar. Now, I'm going to cut a collar to put on to stop the strut falling through if a bolt fails, which it won't, but just in case um, we'll do that. But I'll explain that in a minute. So we'll keep these to one side, um, but we need to get all of this, the rest of this weld off and get it nice and flat so it'll slide through. So we'll change the disc to a flatter disc. Again, touch it so it's not got too much heat in. Theoretically, that should now slide through the hub. And I'll just show you on this side what I've done. So, on this side, you've got the strut through the hub, which is there's a gap just between the CV joint and the bottom of the strut. And we've put this collar in. So this collar is to take up the gap between the bottom of the roll bar bracket and the top of the hub, just to stop any slip. It won't, but it's just to stop any slip if it would. So eventually we'll cut, cut these off, we'll weld them to this collar, um, and then it'll pick up this pipe and this wire, just to uh, make it look sort of factory again. But for now, I've just cable tied them, just because I want to get it all on, make sure it all works. Um, and I need to get some gas for the welder as well, so I can't really do it yet. Right, now we've modified the strut, so it'll go through the hub. We need to build the strut up. So you've got here standard strut out of it. You can see the difference in size already and difference in height. So off the standard strut, all we need is the top mount section. Now, this isn't necessarily the right way of doing it, but it's the way I do it. 21mm socket on an impact gun, foot on the spring. Undo it. There we go. Now, here's a problem. This top mount's failed. So there's our first problem. I'm going to have to go and get another top mount. Right, as I was saying before, we found out that this top mount, the chair itself, was on the standard strut. All we need off the whole top mount is the bearing, which is what all the weight sits on your steering does, and this top mount. Now that top mount's shot, so I've just nipped out and got another one. Um, and then what we're gonna use, so we've done, showed you what the hub mod is. Now this is what's referred to as the top mount mod. Now as standard, this is the aluminium plate, so the bearing sits inside there and runs on that. Spring sits up onto the inside of that. This part is the part that interacts with the body of the van and sort of dampens the suspension, if you like. Um, and that is how thick, how, how, how it sits in the van. Now, what we're going to do is get rid of this piece, swap it for this piece. Now, these are the same thing. They've just been machined down. The reason being, I'll show you on the new top mount, this one, it sits on like that. This one's just been machined down so that this part 
so it's inside like that and you gain some extra loads it's free loads basically so all we need is this new one with the original bearing new top mount and we'll build that as the top mount mod and that essentially is the top mount mod so new strut let's get this built up I'm setting these coilovers i want this van to be as low as possible on these coilovers so what i'm doing is you've got these two lock rings so you've got a, again you've got a some bit of plastic there to damp it a little bit stop without any vibrations spring sits like that these locking collars are and there's a thread on on the shaft which is what you adjust your height with now i want this as low as possible so what i'm doing is this bottom lock collar i'm turning it one turn on to the bottom because all that does is locks this top ring the top ring takes all the weight the bottom ring it's just to lock it so that this can't turn as you turn in the steering in the van so we're going to lock it as absolutely low as it can go with the bottom one being turned on one one turn and that's it we've got some c-spanners and knock them up now i don't know if these c-spanners are for this van or this coilover kit because it didn't come with any but we'll try and see if we can get them to work yep we'll nip them up so we'll just nip them up so that's two lock rings so now it shouldn't move so they're on you've got your spring so you put your bearing on first then your modified top mount then the rubber top mount goes on now this is a very important thing when you buy your the second hand struts second hand struts will come with this now this is just a normal nylock nut don't fit these with the normal nylock nut you need to use you need to take the original one off which is this the reason being if you look at the height difference basically when you put that on there and do all this up this piece of rubber sits in the turret top um, on the van and then on top of that so this sits on the this rubber sits in the turret top of the van this nut here this sits in the turret top of the van this nut here goes down onto that this all then goes through a hole in the body um, and you've got this piece here which is another piece that goes on top and another nut goes on top this basically holds all this assembly together you put it in the van this goes on and another nut holds it into the van this is crucial because of its height it is to the right amount that when you go um, put, it, put it in the van and you put this plate on then put the nut on top and do it up this is the right distance that it just squeezes this rubber the right amount to grip the strut into the van if you use this one it's not tall enough and you as you're doing it up all you're doing is stretching the threads on the strut and eventually it will snap so the best tip you can have for fitting suspension to a T5, at least a T5, is always use the original nut off of the original strut to reassemble the strut back up before you put it back in the van. Right, let's get these built. Right, we've built the strut with the modified top mount. We've done the hub mod on the hub. The next thing we need to do, really, before we start assembling anything back up, is make the collar that I showed you on the other side. Now, these ones aren't going to have the um, brake line bracket on them because I need to get gas for the weather, as I said. Um, but this will ensure nothing will slip or slide when we're driving the van just to make sure it's all right. This side as well, another problem, which I didn't film, but I've just spent the past hour drilling one of these pinch bolts out. Now these pinch bolts are well past it. So the other side's got two in, which I'm not overly happy with um, the condition of. This side will only have one in, um, so I will be ordering four new pinch bolts, but the van isn't leaving the farm um anytime soon um so it's not really a problem at the minute we'll just get it back on so i can get it back on the floor and move it 
if I need to and see where it sits. Right, I'm gonna cut some these collars and then we'll get all of this side back together and then make a start on the rear. Welcome to another day. Front was all done and pretty easy. Rear end, um, I didn't film the sort of dismantling everything and um, I had a bit of trouble um, trying to get a few bits off. So I've spent about half a day freeing things off and undoing bolts and freeing off all sorts of stuff. But we've done that, I've got it all done now. We're all prepped and ready to go. The passenger side is all done and ready to go. I've just got a bolt suspension back in, put the brakes on and that's done. I've done everything that I need to do. Uh, passenger side, uh, driver's side, I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about what's what and what we're doing at the moment. So, when you remove your standard spring, which is quite a big spring, the best thing you can do is undo both rear shocks. Um, the reason being that you've got an anti-roll bar that links the two arms together. Um, so if you are undo both, both arms will droop down. If you've got one with still with the shock in, You'll be able to drop this one down, this one will stay fixed, this one will drop down, but it won't drop down enough to be able to get the spring out. So you undo both, it'll drop both down, you'll have, you've got loads of play in it on the bush to move both to get, to get the springs out, because they are quite big springs. Um, off the springs, the top plate we don't need, I've been that, that's gone already, I don't know where that's gone, I think it's in the skip. Um, all we need is the bottom rubber off of it. Now, a lot of times these wear out and the spring wears through the point, but I'm actually quite surprised how good a condition these are in. I've got new ones, but these are in that good a condition. I'm not even gonna waste money putting new ones on it, to be honest. Um, so this is the spring that goes in the rear. This rubber piece off of the lower arm of the arm goes on the bottom of the spring there. And then the coilover kit, so we've got this on the back, which is a threaded adjuster, so you can adjust the height. Now, that is probably 20 odd mil thick, I don't want to use that. So I've been and got from Transport HGVs, which are an adjust to delete. So this is a piece of, um, it's made by Powerflex, so it's a piece of nylon or thing, I don't really know what it is, polyurethane, um, that they fabricate that fits in there instead of having your adjuster in. And what this does is it just stops the metal of the spring touching the metal of the van and you're getting vibrations through it. So it just dampens between the arm and the, and the, and the chassis. Um, so I'm not sure how low this is going to sit with these adjusted deletes in. It's been many, many, many years since I've fitted a set of these coilovers to a van. Um, so hopefully, with the mods we've done to the front, this will make the back and the front sit somewhere near level. Um, there's a few modifications we've got to go to the rear end though. One modification you want to do, really, probably, doesn't matter how low you're going, I'd say, for now, is you want to, you want to relocate this. These ain't are not the best, so we're probably going to have to try and pull a cable tie through there to hold it in place. But this is uh, the ABS line. So when whenever you go lowering a vehicle, uh, as much as you can, then you go out and drive, and then instantly the ABS light comes on on the uh, on the dashboard. Chances are you've crushed this cable between the chassis here and this arm. So you want to make sure this is well out of the way, and we'll re-drill two holes in the side. So put that in now. On this, it is a, if I can read it, six mil, six mil drill bit. So we'll work out about where we want to put it. We'll put it about there. It's cast so it's nice and soft. I'll just try and push that back in there. Even though this is absolutely mullered, hopefully it will still hold. Might try and order some new clips actually off eBay. I thought they are, they're not going to be a lot of money and it'll be doing the right thing. But for now, that one's in there. And then this one will drill here. Just 
clear that top hole. Now this one is absolutely done. So I think what we'll do is get cable time past that curb. So we'll try and feed. So let's put a bend in the end of it, try and feed it through the holes. Make sure it's away from the top of the arm. Now we shouldn't catch that on the chassis as we go over bumps. Now I don't think this is going to be anywhere near low enough to worry about that, but it really is just worth it's worth doing it. It's not it's took what two minutes to do. You might as well do that. Now, next thing we need to do, which where's the torch? We'll try and get it lit up to show you. We've moved the ABS light now, coming under the van. Because we're going to be lowering this quite a bit, we need to cut this down. Now, this is the bump stop tube. So in here is a rubber, piece of rubber that knocks on this is to act as your bump stop. Now, because the springs are so short, they'll sort of bind on each other and create their own bump stop. Pop that out. So there's your bump stop. Now, inside there, about 25 mil up, I think it is. So about an inch up. I'm sure it's about an inch ish. About an inch up is the platform that this sits onto. And we want to cut this off to about, we want to cut it off to just the underside of that plate. Reason being, if you cut it there, it should give you enough clearance. For these two points being together when the spring's on but then in theory well the other side works pretty well if we cut it off to that point when you've got uh, the suspension on full droop for an mot for example the spring can't fall out if you go cutting it all the way up here as soon as the suspension's on droop certainly on this length of shock we've got because the length of shock extended determines the droop on the suspension um your spring will just fall out as soon as you jack it up which is an mot fail so um, yeah, we're cutting as minimal off so the spring won't fall out when it's MOT'd or jacked up if you're changing wheels or anything. Now the way that I have just come up with to um, mark this, which actually worked pretty well the other side, this sat up to about, there's a lip on it, you see the taper there. So what I did was I've got the lid off of a spray can, but can of plus gas. I've put that on there like that. We've put that point to about where it is, and then that is wrapped around the tube like that. And then from that, I've got rubber gloves. So I've swapped into some latex gloves. This is on in about the right place. Put a, just check with your finger, make you happy with where it is. I think we're happy there. Hold it with two fingers and then I rattle can. Black paint that I just found. And that marks a pretty nice line where you've got to cut. Because when you get under there, and I'm using a welding mask in the, with a grind function on, uh, like an auto dim welding mask, on, with a mask on, grind fun, on the grind setting for the screen. It's a bit of a pain to see what you're doing. Now, I'm not going to put the camera under there because I don't want to get sparks all over it and wreck it. Um, but I'll put a uh, time lapse camera on out here and sort of from a distance and get this cut out and then we'll move on to the next step. So now we've got that cut. There's the tube. It's not the perfect, most perfect one I've done. The other side was better. But that's the amount we've cut off. So, like I said, it's about an inch. Uh, and inside here, is this little little cap that was inside there and we've literally on the seam of where they join is where we've cut and that's just fallen out so inside it's all wax oiled and sealed and everything but the edge is obviously not and it's now metal so we just chuck a little bit of paint on that uh, on both sides and then really we can start 
chucking this back end back together. Now we've cut, uh, got everything out we need to do. We've relocated that. Nothing else, as for these loads, I don't think nothing else will cap. Um, so we can start putting everything back together. Rubber on the bottom, there's a little location nipple that you need to make sure it's in the right place. Trip the top of the shock in. So we're going to get the next one to the other side to the same point as this, spring-wise. And then chuck the brakes on, do the same as at the front. We'll jack it up somewhere so that the weight's just come off the axle sand, so it's at about right out. Nip everything back up, I've undone all the uh, arm bolts and everything as well. Uh, we'll nip all them back up, uh, just so we're not putting any un unnecessary pressure on bushes. Uh, and the same on, on the shock bushes, you don't want really to go twisting them too much on droop and then it'll be all the way up. So jack it up so it's just come off the axle stand on the jack and on the arm, nip everything up, drop it back down again, um, and then yeah, wheels on, should be good to go. <laughs> There it is then, T5, as low as we can get it on a set of budget coilovers. Um, it isn't exactly what I'd call low. It's lower, for sure, it's definitely lower than it was, but it isn't necessarily what I would call low. Um, but it is a massive improvement on what it was on the standard suspension, on the standard steels. Um, it just looks amazing. Wheels are 18 inch Amarok steels um, 18 by seven and a half, fiber 120 stud pattern direct fit, ET45, so they're perfect. Um, they took a little bit. If you want, the, if I was keeping this, I'd probably get them banded um, just to fill the arch that a little bit more. But for the money, I think they look absolutely amazing. Massive, massive shout out and massive thank you to Paul at Tamar Wheels for sorting the wheels out for us. When I started this project, there was only one set of wheels that I even considered spoke to Paul and I think within two days they were sat in the stables ready to go on the van. From measuring the van then, from standard, I spoke to a few people and I, as, as I do I got a little excited and didn't measure the ride height from standard but centre of the wheel to the top of the arch on a standard van is about 450mm. These are 355mm now so we're 95mm down and the modifications we've done to the front and to the back means that the van sits level, so it's 95 mil front and rear. So, turns out it sits absolutely bang on where we wanted it to be. Obviously, if you're gonna put go putting weight in the back, it'll drop a little bit. Um, but at the minute, this is just gonna be an empty van carpeted some windows and yeah, that's it. It looks good, much better. Really happy with the way it's looking right now. If anyone's got any questions or comments about the van, drop them in the comments below. I'll try and answer as quick as I can. Um, but yeah, it's been a fun one to do this. It's took a little bit of effort with the age of the van and trying to get things off of it 
fit. I think it's well, well worth it. It looks so much better. Even with the tatty paint, it looks good. I'd keep it as it is now and daily drive it quite happily. I love the look of it. I just, there's something about it. And um, the roof rack was originally going, but now I think the roof rack's staying. I've got a little bit of an idea for that, um, but that'll be in a future video. But as ever, thank you so much for watching. Um, the channel is doing, yeah, doing quite well, which I'm really, really, uh, really happy with. Um, as ever, like, share, subscribe, give us a comment. And um, yeah, right, now this is done, let's get this video finished editing, and then it's on to some more modifications on the van. Till next time, cheers.